Hi guys, today I want to talk about the, the design for the Reliant frame, which is supposed to be a hexacopter that is supposed to be more reliant than any other drones that I've built so far, hence the name. And the idea came up when I saw the hexcopter from Flywoo, um, which uh, is a hexacopter and we have not seen hexacopters in many years now, at least not any um, commercially, commercially, commercially built ones. Um, and that is why I thought this was quite special because hexacopters in theory have just two more uh, motors and propellers therefore can create more thrust. They have a higher surface area of propeller space though th so they fly more stable and in theory they would also still fly if one motor stops working or one propeller goes off. Um, now we've seen in several videos that this is actually not the case and I'm pretty sure that the reason for this is because beta flight has not been um, uh, yeah, caring about hexacopters for a long time because there was no interest and that's why it just dropped out somewhere. But I hope that this will be um, put back, back into the code in a working way so that one motor, one propeller does not, um, that's not working anymore does not um, crash the drone. Anyway, when I was looking at this design in uh, Thingiverse and I just took the main parts of my uh, discovery frame here as a basis because that was my first um, approach that I wanted to um, to yeah build arms that, that I can just um, connect to my existing frame and then this will be the easiest way to make this work. So this is the, the order of the motors that the Flywoo Explorer is using and if we look at this from the top um, we see that this is very clean. I mean this is this is an, an very straight like this is the way that it should be with a hexcopter. All the um, motors have the same distance from the middle um, and there is no weird um, yeah, mo motor setup going on or anything. The problem is that here you will see that if this is the, the camera you're gonna have lots of propellers in the view and this is something that I really dislike. And when I started playing around with it, you know, how can we make the motors not be in the view? This is very difficult. Um, you either have to go very far out and then you almost have a V shape, um, which is an interesting shape by itself. I mean, it, it takes up a lot of space, um, but there is one problem with it. Um, there is a company called uh, Aztec. They were purchased by Intel not too long ago, and they came up with this uh, with this V um, form many many years ago, and they even um, signed a patent for it. And they have been super busy um, suing anyone who has anything to do with this V shape. So keep that in mind whenever you want to design a V shape. Um, I'm not sure. I, I guess hobbyists are left alone. Um, but if you are sharing this design or anything, it might get an issue for them and you might get emailed by them. Um, it's, I, I totally am against patents like these. I think they kill innovation and also are a high trouble for us hobbyists. Um, but anyway, that's, that's the case that it is. Um, Okay, so that was the first idea. We could do something like this, but this would be large and waste uh, lots of space. Another idea would have been to, you know, just um, move these uh, propellers over each other. Um, however, of course, you would need to make sure that this works. And I thought about doing it in a way that looks like this. Let's make this like this. Where is it? Here. Um, so this was the one of the first attempt that I did um, and I just put a distance, uh, you know, 3D printed part um, between the um, arm and the motor and that's uh, that will result in a uh, distance of uh, enough space that uh, these propellers are not gonna um, hit each other. And I found a very interesting paper on the web, um, the scientific paper, um, that uh, was looking into the topic of overlapping propellers and it said if the over overlapping area is 20% or was it 25% um, or less, uh, then this is not going to be an issue and that's how I designed it. So the overlapping issue is not going to be more than these 20% and then there should be no th um, reduction in throttle this way. So um, that was the first attempt. Um, 
I think it doesn't, and, and also what, what I did, I moved the uh, front propellers a bit further um, outwards, which is now possible as they're overlapping, and the uh, the middle is uh, a bit shifted to the back, um, but there is enough space for the, um, for the battery to be moved to the back as well, so that should work out well. Um, but yeah, it doesn't really look that sexy, um, and I, I think... It still looks somehow somewhat clunky. I also did a three-inch version of this. I didn't design motors in here, but um, there is also a three-inch version for this, if you're interested in that. Um, and I also, just for the sake of it, I also designed a V-shape uh, form of it with um, uh, propellers that are overlapping. Maybe this is not covered by the patent then. I don't know, I've got no idea, but as I have no interest of selling this commercially, um, I, I don't have a problem with that. Um, Okay, so these were the different um, forms I initially came up with, but I don't know, somehow I, I like this V shape uh, the most actually, um, but I still wasn't feeling like this is going to be super cool in any way. And then I thought about the different other ways how you can make a hexacopter, like a, a drone with six motors and propellers uh, work, and I came, I came upon a... Um, like how, yeah, that happens often, um, Oscar Liang's page. Um, and he described the different uh, kinds of um, drones that there are. And for a hexacopter, there is the classic hexacopter shape, of course. And then there is the Y6 um, hexaco hexacopter. And these also have been around for quite a long time. Um, and what they do is that they put the, uh, the two of the motors on top of each other um, and have the, have them turn in a different direction and that that that's what causing um yeah the, the upward thrust so the, the two of them um, on top of each other are just um adding to each other and they're not countering the the thrust the thrust that they are creating so that's gonna um be fine um i remember in the past we we said that building a drone like this will reduce the thrust that you can get out of the motors um, by 80% in average. So um, compared to a hexcopter like here, uh, you're probably going to have around 20% less thrust. But then again, 20% is not um, that that big of a problem, I think. And if it still works out, then why not? Um, the problem with this is, though, that um, if you want to build a drone like this, you need to have landing gear. And landing gear is something that, you know, for a reason we haven't seen in many years because it just sucks. It's it's an issue when you crash, it's going to be broken quickly um, and the whole thing gets, again, more clunky and large. Let's see another picture um, like this. Um, we have drones like this, we had drones like this in the past a lot, um, but it's, you know, it's a bit annoying. However, um, during my research, I came upon the Shen drone Sicario, which is a drone supposed to be used for carrying like really large professional cameras, like the um, red Epic here, um, or is it an Epic? I don't know. I'm, I'm not that versed with, with these um, expensive uh, cameras. But um, anyway, what they did, and I think this is a, an amazing idea, is to have. Um, like um, arms that are um, basically upside down connected to the main frame and this way you can build it without having a landing gear. And this is what influenced me most and this resulted in the design of the Reliant that I am going forward with now and that is this here. Um, it looks a bit like um, yeah, like like these um, I don't know what they call dropships from from um, Terminator. Um, but what I did, I used the the idea that uh, Shandrons had with a Sicario just for a Y6 setup because the um, the Sicario has um, eight motors. So here we will only have six. Um, and yeah, this is the Reliant frame. I'm gonna make a little fly around. Okay, um, so what do we have here? We have, um, let's uh, turn off the um, 3D printed parts and also the motors and propellers. So these, this is the core frame. Um, the core frame consists of two main plates, uh, one at the bottom, one at the top, and then you have the arms that are um, pushed into the main frame and therefore they are getting uh, secured. And left to right you have space for putting um, 
spacer bolts um, in here um, and the, the the height of the arm is a little lower than your um, 20 millimeter spacer bolt um, it's like 19.7 or something so when you um, screw down the spacer bolts it's gonna uh, provide an additional uh, measure to have um, really a strong connection here and the arms cannot move at all in any way um, and then here in the, on the side you have the motor plates and these motor plates have um, also um, like uh, yeah like little cutouts that that are used to um, so that they, they can be securely set, uh, mounted to the to the arm here um, and also I thought of using um, six millimeter spacer bolts here on the side in between um, and screws from both sides um, and that is supposed to give it a really strong and tight connection the motor plates can be used for 9mm and up to 12mm um, motor mounting distances. Um, so you can use, you know, the 1404 motors, but you can also use the, the uh, 2004 motors or anything. So that's going to work out well. Um, if you look at it from the side, um, there is enough space that you can easily um, put the, the motor screws in. Um, the arm is getting a little bit more thin here, but given that you have the motor plates from both sides, I think that's going to be more than enough. Um, but we'll see with the first crash if this is going to be an issue or not, but I, I, I'm pretty sure it won't be. Um, yeah, so um, this is the core frame. Then um, if we look at it from the side here, we have um, two, like a dual mount, uh, stool stack setup, um, whatever you want to call it. Um, but you have a, a 20 by 20 mount here at the front, also 16 by 16, um, which is important because regarding electronics, we are a bit limited because there aren't that many um, six in one ESC boards out there. Um, actually, there is just one and that is from, from Flywoo, the one they did for the Explorer. So we have to use that one. Um, but you also have a 20 by 20 mount in the back here for the Cadex Vista, like this. Um, it sits pretty nicely in between the, the, the main plates. So there's, there is enough space to mount it with the case. So that's, that's going to be fine. And then in the front here, you have space for your stack, like the, the flywheel stack that goes in here. Um, and you will also have space for the receiver and other parts. And yeah. So if we um, look at the 3D printed parts, we have the camera mount with the Cadex Vista in the front here. This is the same camera, camera mount that I use on all my frames that are um, yeah, larger than uh, three inch. Um, so if you already are flying one of my frames and you already have printed this, you can just use it for this uh, drone as well. Um, and what we also have is a GPS mount here in the back. Um, that I don't like that super much, but I wasn't um, coming up with any better idea to do this um, because uh, like the GPS should be as, yeah, as far away from the carbon as possible. And also it should be uh, having a clear view upwards to the sky. And uh, this is the best idea I could come up with because this middle area here is gonna be pretty uh, crowded when we look at where the, the um, the battery is going to be and it's going to be somewhere around here. Um, so yeah, this is the best idea if I had. If, if you guys got an idea where to better put this GPS, then please let me know. I would be excited to know. Um, and you can also move this, you can twist this a little in the right direction where you need it to be. Um, but yeah, that's, that's basically where the GPS comes uh, from me. Um, the antenna for the Cadex Vista, that's also a problem because there is not really much space where to put it here. Um, but my idea was to put it uh, here in the front with an SMA adapter that is connected to the Cadex Vista here. Um, and then you have space to put the a longer um, antenna in here, um, which will be necessary because I want to do long range flights with this thing. Um, if you have seen the um, the mount of the camera here, you saw that there is also the um, option to mount a GoPro, which of course is very important. And let's see what that looks like. 
um, that would look like this. Um, there is enough space for the antenna to be going through um, and uh, this should work out very well. Um, we need to see regarding the um, center of gravity. Um, the battery probably needed to be moved as much uh, to the front as possible, like the, the cog is probably going to be around here, um, but still that's going to be just fine. Now if we look at the motors and propellers, the motors I designed here are 1404 motors, which is the size that I think makes most sense to be used with this frame. Um, and this is what it looks like in the end, um, everything put together. Let's move this a bit to the side. Um, so this is what it's going to be looking like in the end. Um, yeah, that's that's the design. Um, I would be very interested to know what you think of it, um, how you like it. I think it came out pretty well and I'm very excited to see this uh, built and, and fly in the end and we will see that in the future videos. So thank you very much for watching. See you again soon.